Hi, this is Dave from Steel City Drones Flight Academy alongside Michael McVeigh from Florida Drone Supply who is one of my lead drone instructors. And we're here today to really help you decide and try to just make sure that you understand the differences of different levels of drone training. Uh, we have a lot of customers and clients coming to us asking us for our uh, the put packages together for drone training and we realize that a lot of clients they really don't know the difference between the different levels of drone training so we want to step you through what some of those are and, and the differences what you can get especially when you're trying to compare different flight schools so the very first thing I want to say uh, Michael would be you know there's kind of three different levels of training out there the first level is what I would consider to be hobbyist, mm -hmm. where you may spend maybe 15, 20 minutes with an instructor, basically a learn not how to crash class, yep. right? Yep. And then I would say the next level up would be an introduction kind of commercial level, where you, know, you have to know your uh, rules and regulations for part 107. You might have a little bit of uh, about risk management uh, and safety on a very light level and that would, would what I would consider to be a introduction class and then there's more comprehensive classes and more comprehensive training so really we want to make sure that you understand and talk a little more about each of them again um, a lot of drone schools and drone flight schools training classes are going to basically give you um, one instructor for maybe 10 or up to 20 students at a time and we absolutely do not do that and we don't do that because we feel that the level of uh, tr the quality of the training suffers um, you're not going to get as much flight time one-on-one -on -one flight time with an instructor as you would if you have maybe five or six so we limit ours to really no more than six and that's for a very specific reason, because we want to make sure that we have the comprehensive time with each of our students. And, you know, Michael, we build our uh, flight training up from the ground up. We start out with a 101 level, which is Drones 101, and we kind of space our classes out to allow our students to be able to practice on their own and gradually get up to that point, because we want to make sure you understand you can't learn how to fly a drone overnight and we're gonna we'll go over why that is with automation it makes things a lot easier but that doesn't mean that you can fly learn how to fly very quickly it is a process this process is something where I feel it takes up to maybe 100 flights of practice and maybe 15 20 hours of practice time so you it just can't become a really good commercial pilot really quickly the second thing is the experience level for the instructors is very important. At the very minimum, our flight instructors have 700 hours of flight experience. And they've all started out doing work for clients and getting, you know, learning from the trenches up. So we have a lot of experience level and that can't be substituted. It's not just understanding like how to make the drone go higher or faster or sideways or backwards. It's what do you do when you have something that's unexpected? Yeah. And having a manned aviation background myself, I think that's one thing that the FAA really taught us in ground school and they, the flight instructors teach us while we're flying is it's real easy to operate your drone or your aircraft when everything is going according to plan. It's what happens in an emergency scenario, what happens in an unexpected scenario where having all the time behind the sticks and all the time flying really, really helps you make good decisions safe decisions and get the aircraft back under control, under control and back into whatever expected situation that you're flying in at the time. I couldn't have said it any better. Um, we really concentrate a lot of our curriculum on preparing for the worst case scenario. Um, because if you're not prepared on how to handle a certain situation as it comes up, what ends up happening is the drone operator panics and, and, and it either flies away or you crash. Right. So there's no other way around that. That's what happens in these type of situations. So we, a part of experiencing the worst case scenario is we really spend a lot of time getting our students to learn how to fly manually without any automation. Because there's a huge difference between flying manually and without any automation 
and learning to fly with just GPS position hold. It's like what I consider to be like with training wheels. Mm -hmm. You know, when you were little, you know, your dad would kick off the training wheels and you'd have to you know, ride the bike, yep. you know, for the first time. It really is that much of a difference. A lot of our students, when they first start out with us, you know, they, they kind of, you know, they're nervous, they're not sure what to expect. And then when we get them going on with GPS position hold, just to get their confidence level up, they think, oh my God, this is so easy. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought this was gonna be so much harder. And then when you turn off the automation, it then automatically turns into, holy crap, you know, kind of a right, thing. Right. So that's what we do. We really spend a lot of time teaching everybody how to learn to fly manually. Uh, we have a lot of, you know, a lot of different practice exercises that we put our students through over all of our years of experience in these things of what can happen. So with that said, thanks again, and we'll talk to you soon.